بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه والتابعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين Brothers and sisters, we have been blessed with the Qur'an. This revelation that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had sent to us, which started the prophethood of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the first words of which we heard just a few moments ago, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed humanity at large, mankind and all the creatures, by sending this beautiful Qur'an. In it there is cure and shifa. يَا أَيُّهَا النَّاسُ قَدْ جَاءَتْكُمْ مَوْعِظَةٌ قَدْ جَاءَتْكُمْ مَوْعِظَةٌ مِّنْ رَبِّكُمْ وَشِفَاءٌ لِمَا فِي الصُّدُورِ O people, a reminder has come to you from your Rabb and that in which there is cure for what lies in the hearts. This is the gift of Allah that you have and I have. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala declares that none can come up with a single verse similar to this beautiful Qur'an. None can come up with anything close to it. It is on its own the miracle of this ummah, linguistically perfect, with the meaning absolutely perfect, absolutely accurate in meaning, such that science is continuing to discover more and more to the degree that it is in conformance with what the Quran has revealed many many years back or what was revealed in the Quran many years back my brothers and sisters this gift of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala how should we look at it we all know that it is of utmost importance to realize that every one of us will only be considered true believers if we make an effort to learn the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Otherwise, can we call ourselves true believers? We believe in Allah, but Allah sent a book and we are not interested in what is inside the book. We don't want to know what it means. I'd rather read big novels and big stories and sit and watch movies whole day, but to learn the meaning of the Quran, no. Why do I say I believe in Allah if I'm not prepared to go through the meanings of the Quran? So I call on you tonight to respect Allah and his messenger and to respect the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by undertaking that I will make an effort to learn the meanings of the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because I'm a believer and I believe in Allah and Allah sent me a gift and that is the Quran and this is the prime gift that Allah has given me through which I'm known as a Muslim and a mu'min through which I'm known as a follower of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. If I don't know it, how can I call myself a believer in Allah? So we make the promise. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to fulfill that promise. Brothers and sisters, it is an insult to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for us not to try and learn what his word is all about. I know of people who have been non-Muslim studying the Quran and after they've studied the Quran once or twice, they accept Islam because they realize this is the scripture. Subhanallah. But when it comes to us who were born Muslim, sometimes we've not yet learned the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala more than being able to just read the Arabic without knowing its meaning. I'm not saying that is wrong. It is extremely important to know the Arabic, whether it is with or without the meaning initially. But it is equally important to know the meanings of the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which will take us to paradise. So my brothers and sisters, the Quran was revealed on a day similar to this one. And this is why we are seated here today. And this is why we want to listen regarding the Quran and its revelation. 23 years of revelation. And that is when this entire Quran was brought forth. And for us, it was a gift. A gift of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Sahaba radiallahu anhum, the companions of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, they were so gifted that Every time something happened, they had revelation that would come in order to clarify what was going on. So say for example, something happened, a quarrel between two people or someone asked a question. What would happen is immediately the Prophet ﷺ would be consulted and he would wait for revelation. When revelation came, he recited it to them. When he recited it to them, it was recorded. 
And then later on it was gathered together at the time of Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu, the time of Uthman ibn Affan radiallahu anhu, and it was given to us, which means the incidents that occurred at the time of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam were in actual fact for us to learn a lesson from. This is why a few nights back when we made mention of how Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was told when he frowned and turned away from the blind man Abdullah ibn Ummi Maktoum radiallahu anhu, we made mention of the fact that that happened not because it was to show us how anyone was to be admonished and so on, rather a lesson for us to learn that when we are corrected, how do we take the correction? Subhanallah. When I am corrected, as big as I might think I am, as wealthy as a person thinks they are, as knowledgeable as they think they are, do they take the correction? That's the thing. If you do, you've learned from the Quran. Because the Quran has it there. Those incidents occurred not because the Sahaba radiallahu anhum were bad people. Not at all. In fact, they were the best. They were chosen by Allah to go through those incidents so that Quran could be recorded for us. So my brothers and sisters, for example, a woman came to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa complaining about her husband. So later on verses were revealed. Surah Al-Mujadila or Al-Mujadala. Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قَدْ سَمِعَ اللَّهُ قَوْلَ الَّتِي تُجَادِلُكَ فِي زَوْجِهَا وَتَشْتَكِي إِلَى اللَّهِ Indeed Allah has heard the woman who has come to you arguing or discussing her husband, complaining to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. From this we learn, that man was not a bad man, but the lesson was for us. We should not be bad men the way we treat our women. If you treat a woman badly, what would happen? You've gone against the teachings of the Quran and vice versa. And if you treat someone badly, you should know Allah is watching and Allah knows what he will do as a result. This is the Quran. The messages of the Quran are so powerful, revealed over 23 years. My brothers and sisters, this Quran has in it so much. Let's go through a little bit of it. Subhanallah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and beautifully Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts it forth. Inna nahnu nazzalna dhikra wa inna lahu lahafidun. We have revealed this book and indeed we will ensure that it is protected. Subhanallah. So what is the meaning of the protection of this book? Allah says he will preserve it. He does not need me or you, but he will choose whom he wants from amongst us. And this is why he says, We have made this Quran very easy to understand and to memorize. Anyone from amongst you is going to try to understand and memorize. We should be answering, yes, Ya Allah, I'm going to try. Subhanallah, what a gift of Allah. So part of the protection of the Quran is the fact that all of us who are seated here this evening and anyone who is listening to this from amongst the Muslims, I'm sure you can confidently say you have memorized a part of the Quran. You have memorized Surah Al-Fatiha. MashaAllah. Is that not correct? Can we show our hands how many of us know Surah Al-Fatiha off by heart? Put up your hand. Everyone, MashaAllah. SubhanAllah. Shouldn't you be thankful to Allah that you know Surah Al-Fatiha even sometimes without knowing the deeper meanings of the Surah? That is the miracle of Allah. A person from anywhere in the world, whether it be Australia to America to China, up to the, you know, the north in Iceland and what have you, if they are Muslimin, they would know a few of the Surahs of the Quran. If I were to ask you another question, as to how many people have memorized a little bit more than Surah Al-Fatiha, we would have the same number of hands. Because each one of us needs in order to read our Salah, to have memorized some of the Quran in the Arabic text. So this is why sometimes I speak to people who, are, who have recently reverted to Islam and they ask a question. Can we pray in any other language besides Arabic? The answer is, what do you mean by prayer? If you mean supplication, you can supplicate in any language. No problem. You want to ask Allah, ask Him in any language. Even if you remain silent, He knows what you are asking Him. Subhanallah. Because there is no language in which you call out to Allah. And that is the term prayer that is used by other religions. But when you come to Salah, 
it is never the word prayer that is equivalent to what other religions use because they don't have it. Salah is a special, unique way of worshipping Allah in a way that I will contribute towards the protection of the Quran as a result. What does that mean? That means, I'm sorry, but to read Salah, you have to know part of the Quran in the Arabic language. So how long will it take me to do that? Well, if you are really dedicated, one hour. In one hour, we can teach you Surah Al-Fatiha, we can teach you Surah Al-Ikhlas and Surah Al-Kawthar. The three that one is necessary and the other two are the shortest you can have. And that is the minimum you will have to memorize. Even if I don't speak Arabic, even if you don't speak Arabic. Well, what's the point? Well, there are many points, but one of the points is that you have to contribute towards the preservation of the book. So it is not lost like the previous books. In the previous books, they adjusted the book for them to understand. With the Quran, we adjust ourselves so that we can understand the Quran. Subhanallah. That's the gift of Allah. This is why the Arabic language is so important. And this is why we say, brother, you will have to read Salah in the Arabic language. And people will say, but why? Well, here is part of the explanation. It might not be the whole explanation, but it is a part of it. It is part of the blessedness of this beautiful book, the gift of the Quran. The importance of the book is such that you must read it in Salah. I'm sure you've heard this hadith. There is no salah that is valid if you do not read Fatiha til Kitab, Surah Al Fatiha, in that salah. In one narration, the Prophet says, Read in salah that which you can in terms of whatever is easy for you in, as part of the Quran in salah. So here we are, we've got the answers. So, my brothers and sisters, does it mean that we must just stop? After we've learned Surah Al-Fatiha and one, two surahs in the Arabic language, and we are able to melodiously recite them, but we don't have a clue what they mean. No, that is only the beginning. It is the first step. You are learning how to walk. After that, you learn how to read the rest of the Quran. Now you are able to walk. After that, you start running. What is the running? You run towards Allah by learning the meanings of the words of Allah. And Allah says, whoever runs to me, whoever walks to me, I will rush to him. Whoever comes to me in a certain way, I will come to him faster than he can come to me. That's a hadith Qudsi. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala declares to us. Amazing. So this is the miracle of the Quran. Make an effort. And to be honest, without that effort, we will never be able to understand the Quran. If I'm not prepared to make an effort to be here tonight, I will never be here. It's an effort that's required together with asking Allah's help because Allah helps us and he tells us, I gave you the energy, you start and I will give you the acceptance. Subhanallah. You know, they say like there was a man and these are people who, who do not have the correct, the correct conviction in Allah. It is called tawakkul ala Allah to have this conviction and trust in Allah that he will help you. So there were people in on an island and the island, they were, you know, lost in that island. And what happened is the helicopter comes and it comes, it finds them and there were four or five of them. So they decide, Hey, help has come finally. And now they jump onto this helicopter besides one man. And he says, No, I'm waiting for the help of Allah. I'm waiting for the help of Allah. So they said, well, here it is. What are you talking about? The helicopters come. No, I want the help of Allah. So the helicopter went and this man, he, whatever happened to him happened. And it is reported that, you know what? Later on when they rescued him and they asked him a question that why is it that you did not jump onto that, the first helicopter that had come? He says, I was waiting for the help of Allah. So they said to him, well, the help of Allah came in the form of a helicopter, but you did not jump onto it. Subhanallah. The moral of this whole story is we ask sometimes Allah to help us, help us, help us. Ya Allah, help me get to the masjid. But brother, you are still sleeping. Ya Allah, help me to get up for Fajr. But your clock is not set. Ya Allah, help me so that I don't, you know, I don't feel the fast. But you did not engage in the suhoor that was there. Ya Allah, help me to understand the Quran. But you did not go to the masjid. Ya Allah, help me to read the Quran beautifully, but you don't even listen and you don't even make an effort. The moral of the story is make an effort and ask Allah's help. And that is when you will be able to achieve the help of Allah. The hadith of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, Ista'in billahi wa la ta'jaz. Ihris ala ma yanfa'uka wa ista'in billahi wa la ta'jaz. 
Work hard towards achieving what is beneficial for you. Seek the help of Allah and do not be lazy. That sums it all up. Subhanallah. You want to learn the Quran? Work hard towards it. Ask the help of Allah. Do not be lazy. Without those three things, you are not going to be able to learn the Quran. My brothers and sisters, we all say the gift of Allah, the Quran. You know, if the Quran drops, may Allah protect us. But the Quran, I'm talking of the book where the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is written. The Quran, if it were to drop, what happens? Immediately we rush, we pick it up, we put it up and we say, Astaghfirullah, Allah forgive us. You know, it was disrespect to the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But my brother, a bigger disrespect than that is to have the Quran all over your shelves and to have plaques in your home with Ayatul Kursi and you don't know what it means and to have Surat this and you don't know what it means and the entire Quran is there and you've never ever read it and you're just shining it every day. Wow, I got this manuscript. You know, the last time I went to Istanbul, the mayor gave me a beautiful book. Look at this. Wow, it's handwritten Quran. My brother, stop insulting the word of Allah. My sister, stop insulting Allah's word. A manuscript was sent to you and all you did was considered it an ornament. Is that what the Quran is all about? An ornament? The hadith of the Prophet ﷺ complains about this. That there will come a time when people will consider the Quran an ornament. That's it. In fact, the Quran, Allah says, وَقَالَ الرَّسُولُ يَا رَبِّ إِنَّ قَوْمِ اتَّخَذُوا هَذَا الْقُرْآنَ مَهْجُورًا The verse has several meanings. One of them is when the Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم complained to Allah, Oh Allah, my people have disregarded this Quran. My people have disregarded, disrespected this Quran. Obviously the, the, the verse it has much deeper meaning, but the lesson for us, my brothers and sisters, do not discard it. We all say the Quran is a miracle. The Quran is a miracle. The Quran is the word of Allah. What have we done to this book? This is why we are struggling today because we don't even know the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So I hope and I pray we make an effort to learn, learn the words, number one. So you learn the Arabic wording. It's not so difficult. It requires dedication. The other day we heard about Zayd ibn Thabit radiallahu an, how he learned Hebrew in two weeks. He was back. He knew the language as a master. Well, we should be loving the Arabic language more than that. My brothers and sisters, at least in two years we would know it. At least in 20 years we should know it. Allahu Akbar. Sometimes we've been Muslim for the last 50 years, 60 years. We still don't know anything regarding the word of Allah. All I'm trying to do is to encourage you, inshallah, to encourage you to say, let's do something about it. I think we should be feeling guilty. I always tell myself, looking at my own self, that I've been reading Salah for I don't even know how many years. May Allah accept it from us. When I'm reading Salah, am I able to concentrate on the meanings of the words? If the answer is yes, Alhamdulillah. If not, well, I've been reading Salah for 30 years, perhaps, perhaps more than that. How can I not know the meaning of the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when I, and the meanings of what I say in my prayer when I've been praying for the last 30 years? 30 years. And believe me, if the government came up with a new tax law, every businessman would never sleep before he knew the details of what is expected from him tomorrow morning. Why? Because, hey, I don't want my money to, to be touched. My brothers and sisters, today, we are more interested in cosmetics to look after the body that is going to be buried under the grave, then that which is required to look after the soul that is going to go beyond the grave. Allahu Akbar. If I have a pimple on my head, right here, I noticed it this morning, and I told myself, Subhanallah, that's Allah. Perhaps I had a bit of peanut butter last night. May Allah grant us ease. So it's amazing how we are so interested. You look at it and you say, I have a pimple here. How? Wow. How am I going to stand in front of what about standing in front of Allah? Our whole heart, not a pimple, but it looks like one big wart. May Allah protect us. We don't even have a heart. Why? It is completely destroyed. Everything we've been doing is something far away from the message of the Quran. To cure that, Allah says, Shifa'un lima fi sudur. We have sent you the Quran. In it, there is a cure for what is in the heart. For what is in the chest, meaning the heart. For what is in the chest. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cure our hearts. So my brothers and sisters, let me repeat what I've just said, just in order to motivate us. Sometimes we are more interested in the appearance of the body that is going to be buried in the grave 
than the appearance of the soul that is going to take us beyond that grave. Remember this. And how do I beautify the soul? By beautifying the link with the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the importance of the Quran. And this is why when we read the Quran, it should be such that in salah we are standing. One of the signs of goodness of a person's heart is when he is really so happy that he doesn't bother looking at the time. What is the time right now? No, I don't want to know the time. I'm plugged in with Allah. This is my link with Allah. The Quran is being recited beautifully. MashaAllah. But let's take a look at reality today. Taraweeh starts. Before it starts, we already know, hey, Imam Farari is going to be in that masjid in Harari. SubhanAllah. And we already know that the Imam who is like a Lamborghini is going to be in that masjid there. We better go there. So we arrived two minutes before and we are, we are the first to leave. We already messaged someone. We are finished. What about you guys? He says only eight raka'ah. And we are upset. Allahu Akbar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. I know of this happening. I know in our communities and I'm sure it happens across the globe because we are all human beings. So people are rushing to get the fastest taraweeh. And this is the month of Quran. Nuzulul Quran, the Quran came down. Allah says, Shahru Ramadan alladhi unzila fihi al-Quran hudan linnas. It is this month of Ramadan in which the Quran was revealed as a guidance to man. And we are running away from it. Running away. Why? Come to Raweeh. First day of Salah, the masjid is full. Second day, a little bit less. One week gone, oh, half full. Halfway Ramadan, subhanallah, two or three safs, a few people left. At some point, the Imam and few others. Subhanallah. Then what happens? Eid. The masjid is full once again. And the fajr of the day of Eid, there is no one in the masjid. May Allah grant us ease. This is because our link with the Quran is not strong enough. Let's make it strong. Let's promise Allah. Make an effort. Wallahi, if you and I were to die right now, it would be the best death because we are in the house of Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are sitting listening to words about the attraction to the Quran, the importance of the Quran, the revelation of the Quran. So it's beautiful. The mercy of Allah descends. It's a lovely atmosphere. Look to your left, you see water. Look to your right, you see water. Subhanallah. What a beautiful house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But at the same time, let us not let this link be lost. You know, one of those who will achieve the shade on the day of Qiyamah, a person Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has described him through the blessed lips of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. By saying, رَجُلٌ قَلْبُهُ مُعَلَّقٌ بِالْمَسَاجِدِ A person whose heart is always hanging in the masjid, always wanting to go back, always there. That person will achieve a VIP status on the Day of Judgment. I want it. I'm sure we all do. Also, make an effort to memorize a little bit more. Make an effort to learn the meaning slightly more. Every day, two lines, three lines. Get a CD. Put it into your car. Subhanallah. In the traffic that we have in Kuala Lumpur these days, by the help of Allah, it's so beautiful. You are stuck in it for an hour or two. You can listen to so much of the Quran. And before you know it, there will come a time when you will be so involved with the CD that is playing with the Quranic meanings in your car, that when you arrive at your destination, you will still sit in your vehicle for another five or 10 minutes to let that paragraph or that little story finish. Then you will come out. And people will just look at you, but you've come to your destination. Why are you sitting? Only you know, I'm just linked to the Quran. That is the importance you should be giving the Quran. But today we have Beyonce playing in the background. And we have others whose names we don't even want to mention in the house of Allah pay, playing here and there. And we are such, we memorized all those songs. We know everything off by heart. So much so that when Bollywood sings, we are busy tapping. We are busy tapping. But when someone reads the Quran, we don't even know. We cannot finish this in. Inna Allah ghafoorun. Finish it. We don't even know. Rahim. That much also. Allahu Akbar. May Allah grant us ease. But if we were to sing a big song of someone who's died a long time back, like Michael Jackson or so, half of us would be able to finish that song. Why? Because we heard it many times. So all you got to do, listen to the Quran many times. It's so easy. You know how blessed we are today? Something really interesting. Choose the type of recitation you like. Choose the type of voice you like. You will have some reciter just on the internet that you can get on your phone. You can download his entire recitation and you can listen to it. So you have no excuse. And listen to it again and again. Let it play in your ears and elsewhere. By the help of Allah, find the connection with the Quran. You will find the problems in your life. 
will start easing and you won't know how. But Allah says, you're coming to me, so I will come to you. You know the hadith, we've mentioned it and I'm sure you've heard it as Muslimin so many times that whoever comes close to Allah, a hand span, Allah comes close to him a whole foot. And whoever comes close to Allah walking, Allah comes rushing to him. So if I am trying to listen to the word of Allah, getting close to it, I've eradicated everything that is a waste of time and I'm replacing it with something really good. It will build my spirituality. My problems will be solved. I achieve focus in the world. I will begin to understand why halal is halal and why haram is haram. Today, we are very keen on looking at the ingredients of various items. Small mistake and we say, no, this thing I'm not going to eat. Why? Because it has the wrong ingredients in it. But in our mouths and out of our mouths go words that are terrible, bad, smelly words. Why don't we look at the words that come out of our tongues? Because when you begin to say a lot of swear words and lies and falsehood, automatically you diminish the Quranic words that will come out of that, that mouth. If a man swears all day, he lies all day, he's arguing and fighting all day, he has bad words to utter all day, what do you think his link will be with the words of Allah? Those are calm words of truthfulness. They are calm words of goodness. They are beautiful words that will bring about some positive change in order for that, for that to happen. We first need to promise Allah that we give up our bad habits or we work on them at least. We start eradicating them one by one. It's like a seesaw. The more you have of your link with Allah, the less you have of your link with shaitan. The more you have of your link with shaitan, the less you have of your link with Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. The two cannot come together. I'm the best friend of Allah and the best friend of the devil. Those two do not go together. It's one or the other. So we need to choose. The reason why Allah has blessed us so much, we are seated here. It's a sign of the love of Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. For me to be in his house, I need to have a link with him. When I don't have a link with him, I don't feel like going to his house. If someone really knows you and they like you and you're a person who gives them a lot and so on, they'll be at your house every day. And you, you are at the house, you lay the carpet for them, you give them food and drink and they're so excited. Allah gives us food and drink and health and sorts our matters out and wealth and so on. Come on, you should feel at home at his house. And this is where you have so many of the Qur'ans that are around in the masjid mostly. Pick them up, read one of them, read a few of them, spend a bit of a time. Today we come late for salah and we are the first ones out from salah. Come a little bit earlier, spend five minutes with the Qur'an. This is the connection with the Qur'an. Another very important point regarding the Qur'an is, brothers and sisters, do not let your day begin without opening the Qur'an or reading a few of its words. Do not let your day begin without opening the Qur'an or reading a few of its verses. Do not let your day begin. Because that day was given to you by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It may be your last day. And one day it will be your last day. One day it will. Do you know you look at this body of yours. Look at your fingers. Look at your face. And tell yourself, Ya Allah, a day will come when the people are going to enshroud me and put me into the grave. A day will come when as handsome as I think I am, or as pretty as a woman or whoever thinks she is, a day will come when people will enshroud you and I and lower us into the grave. On that day, all my whatever, you know, moisturizers and what have you and soaps and perfumes and everything will go away. It helped me whilst I was in the world for people to think, hey, the guy looks all right and the woman looks okay. But now, at that point, what will help us is the link with Allah. Did you fulfill your salah? Did you read your Quran correctly? Did you develop this link with Allah? And I'm sure by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, my brothers and sisters, whilst I'm talking, if your heart has moved one inch, only one inch, it is a sign of success. By the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If, if we can just promise Allah that, Ya Allah, Subhanahu wa ta'ala, I'm feeling guilty for what I've been doing in the past. I want to do something better. Just that is already a sign of success. Because the devil begins to feel that he has lost the battle. At least for today. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala strengthen us. So my brothers and sisters, this Quran, the compilation of it, the revelation of it, over 23 years revelation. Thereafter, Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu, was one of those who brought it together from the hearts of the people and the various scrolls that they had written 
and the various scribes that had written and so on. He brought everything together and they, they got it. Uthman ibn Affan radiallahu anhu got one script of it for us. The Sahaba radiallahu anhu memorized it. They passed it on generation after generation. Today, it is the only book that exists that people have memorized in the greatest of numbers. I'm convinced that in our gathering tonight, we would have a minimum of 100 people who have memorized the Quran. Minimum. Seeing the few thousand who are here tonight, I'm quite convinced that minimum we would have a few hundred who have memorized the entire Quran or at least most of it. That's a gift of Allah. Any other book? Wallahi, if you had to write your own book, only with 10 pages, you won't be able to memorize that. That's the gift of Allah. Allah says it's, uh, it's the power. It's the gift. We have blessed you with it. Come on, make an effort. And this is why I want to tell you a very interesting point. Allah says he will protect the Quran. One of the meanings of it is if you made an effort to memorize the Quran, Allah will protect you because you are an asset. If you have protected the Quran in your heart, in the sense that you have tried to memorize it, Allah will protect you because you are a moving Quran. You have it in your heart. So make an effort to memorize a bit more and a bit more. It does not necessarily mean you have to complete the entire Quran, but you have to start and you have to develop one verse a day, inshallah, with the intention of completing even at the age of 60. It's okay, but I memorized one verse a day, just one. Is it impossible? No, it's not. But it requires dedication, help of Allah, and refighting laziness. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to learn this word of His. Wallahi, my brothers and sisters, if we take a look at the battle of Uhud, when the people were martyred, the Prophet ﷺ was burying more than one person in the grave. And what was his statement? He said, anyone who has the Quran in his heart, give him preference. Subhanallah. How many of us would be able to have that Quran in our hearts? At least a little effort. I know many people, we, as we grow older, we want our children to memorize the Quran. But my brothers and sisters, it's not too late for you to memorize it too. Don't say I'm too old. The Sahaba radiallahu anhum were all old people. When they memorized, they were old. They were not young. They were old. And then it brings me to a very interesting point. I don't know if it happens here, but it happens in most countries where a lot of the young people are becoming disorientated or they begin to find that it is not easy to memorize the Quran because the minute they see the Shaykh or the Imam who is helping them to memorize the Quran, the first thing they see is a big stick. And the next thing they see is the stick being used to whack the children to be able to memorize the Quran. So they run away. And then they say, no, you must whack them. You must beat them. It's the Quran. It's the word of Allah. You must beat them for what? If they don't memorize it today, they will memorize it tomorrow. There are different ways of encouraging children. You don't need to beat. And then I heard one man say, well, if your teacher beats you, wherever the stick has struck, the fire of Jahannam will not touch. Where did you get that from? If that was the case, the Sahaba radiallahu anhum would be asking the messenger to beat them up completely from the top to the bottom. He taught so many people, they memorized the Quran. Muhammad had the graduates who graduated with the whole of Islam in their hearts. Do you know of a single hadith where he beat one of them because, hey, you don't know this verse, I beat you up? One of them? Even one? Not even one. So I'm saying this because we need to change the trend. We need to start employing different methods to encourage the children to memorize the Quran so that they look forward to it. Not by beating them up, no but by giving them beautiful incentives, my beloved children. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for them. Really, I know when I memorized the Quran, I might have been amongst the category who also joined what we were saying here. May Allah make it easy. I don't want to say it again. But remember one thing we need to know that is not the way we teach the Quran. The Quran is never taught by the stick. And I know of some people who say it's the only way you can get the kids to do things. No, if that's the case, we have failed. Really, because look at the sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu What did he say? Did he ever teach us to do that? The answer is no, never, not at all. So my brothers and sisters, I think it's about time we looked at it and we showed a keen interest. But 
in our homes, if we have the Quran playing in the background or we give importance to the Quran and the translation of the Quran and the meanings of the Quran ourselves, we are role models, our children will automatically follow. The problem is, I want my child to be a very good Muslim, but myself, I'm busy on the phone with other women or perhaps I'm busy, you know, chatting away. I'm gone with my friends up to late at night. I'm hardly there in the weekends. When things come, I'm sitting and watching Germany play Argentina, subhanallah. And what's happening, it's almost time to eat. And we look, I can't, I can't because you know what? My team, my team. And that's what happens. Okay, give me the food quickly. I know it's time for suhoor here. Okay, okay. Let me have something. And we're busy eating. And our eyes do not go off, subhanallah, the screen. Why? Because people are kicking a ball. And then we tell our child, hey, you've got to go to the madrasa at 8 o'clock in the morning. But dad, we were watching the match together. I'm not worried. You need to go. What hypocrisy is this? What hypocrisy is this? Really? We need to be genuine people. You want your children to do something? Show it to them in you. They will do it quick, fast. You start reading salah. Your child who's one year old will join you in salah without saying one word. You will cry. Why? Because you are fulfilling salah. You come out to the masjid, like I know on a Friday, it happens to a lot of us, I'd like to hope that, you know, you dress and you're going to the masjid early and your little son comes to you and says, I need to come. And he wants to wear the things just like you and he wants to walk with you. Who told him to come? He will fight. He will cry if you don't take him to the house of Allah. Because he saw that every Friday, my dad goes and he's so happy. He puts his perfume, he looks smart and neat and he's gone. Why don't we do that five times a day? Subhanallah. May Allah grant, grant us ease and goodness. In fact, when we go home, we can sit with our children, subhanallah, and they will immediately start following. And this is the teachings of the Quran. This is what the Quran has come with. This is what the Quran says. It leads us to the sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa And it has been given to us as a beautiful gift. And this is why today we have chosen to speak about the encouragement so that all of us can be encouraged. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for us all. The beautiful book of Allah. If we look at how the kuffar tried their best to put in the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that which would create doubt in the hearts of people, they failed. They did not succeed. To this day, no matter where you are, if you were to read some portion of the Quran, a person who does not speak your language will be able to correct you. If I were to read Surah Al-Fatiha and I don't speak your language and I were to make a mistake in something you know from the Quran, immediately it is the right of everyone who is behind the Imam to correct the Imam because we will not tolerate mistakes in the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not at all. And this is why, mashallah, we enjoy a beautiful recitation. Mashallah, we have an Imam with us who is a top reciter. You hardly hear, in fact, we have not heard a single blunder by the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah grant him strength and not only him, but us all. But do we appreciate that gift? Part of appreciation is to come and to read, to enjoy the recitation, the words of Allah, and to achieve goodness from it, to go back feeling blessed. If we are true believers, we go back feeling blessed. But if we have a weakness in the heart, we need to cure it. Because sometimes we feel very angry and upset. You know, one day I was in the masjid and one man came to me and pointed at another Imam and said, you see that Imam, when he reads, he reads too long. And I'm looking at him and I said, what do you mean he reads too long? And I know that Imam, he said, he reads very long. You know, it, it really discourages us from coming to the masjid. So you need to have a word with him. I said, my brother, I need to have a word with you because I have heard the Imam on Friday, you are saying he read too long. He read Sabbi Isma and Hal Ata. That is a Sunnah. You want him to drop the Sunnah? If that was the case, we would read Inna Atayna Kal Kawthar every Jum'ah. And then what would happen? So then later on, two, three days later, he comes back to me and he told me, you know, I ask Allah to forgive me. I was thinking of what you were saying. He says, I, it is only Jum'ah that I attend anyway. And even that, I was thinking it's too long. So I told him, there you are. If you want, you may go for Salatul Maghrib. You will find it quite short. But my brothers and sisters, wouldn't you agree with me that a lot of us, listen to this, I'm just swiping, okay? A lot of us, when we start our Salah and we finish our Surah Al-Fatiha, the first thing we say, Inna a'tayna kal kawthar, li rabbika wanha. It happens to a lot of people. 
that instead of thinking of the other surahs you know, I know Surah Al-Duha, Alam Nashrah, I know Surah Teen, I know so many others. Why do we sometimes go for the shortest? May Allah grant us forgiveness. Really, think about it. We are talking of Nuzul Quran. You know other surahs. Li'ilafi Quraysh, Alam Tara. Read other surahs as well. Don't stick your salah to Inna Atainak al Kawthar and Kulhu Allahu Ahad for every salah you have. Come on. May Allah grant us forgiveness. I'm saying this because I know we talk to people and wallahi, it happens to a lot of people. And they, they admit to say, you know what? Somehow, now that you're telling me it's true. Allahu Akbar. Your salah is valid. But come on, we need a better link with the Quran. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. Melodious recitation of the Quran. We should enjoy it thoroughly and beautify. This is one book or one kalam, the speech that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us something amazing about it. That through the blessed lips of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it is the only word you're allowed to actually make your voice melodious in order to put forth. So when I'm reading the Quran, I make my voice as melodious as possible. And that is considered an act of worship. May Allah accept it from us. I want to end by something important. Every letter of the Quran you read, you get 10 rewards. Okay. Every letter you read, you get 10 rewards. A few days ago, a friend of mine told me, he sent me a message. I forget the figures. But he sent me figures to say, if you read the whole Quran, this is how many letters there are. And this is how many million rewards you would get. I don't know. He took it up to 32 or 320. I'm not too sure. Uh, I think 32 million or 3.2 million. It was a big figure. But I recall the three and the two in there. You know, I, I feel so bad not having memorized that figure. But the truth is, whatever the figure was, it is so large, such a big figure. In the Ramadan, it is multiplied even beyond. Do you know that? And this is why we, you and I know that one of the things everyone complains about in the whole world is the price of petrol. Do you agree? Everyone complains fuel is very expensive, very expensive. So now when you go to your service station and, and you want to fill your tank, before we used to say, fill, and the man would fill it and we'd take a few ringgates out and pay him. Now we go to say, 100 ringgait. See the difference? So before we used to say fill and he fills it and we can still pay him. Now you got to tell him how much you have. There's a difference. Why? I tell you why. Because the prices keep going up so much so that the machines that keep tally of how much you've got, they, they, they begin to, like in my country, there was a time when they would tell you 1.3 and then they have a sticker next to it saying multiplied by 10. And after that they say multiplied by 100. So it goes so quick. And as you are filling the fuel, before you know it, hey, that's already a hundred ringgit. In South Africa, they would say that's already 500 rands and you've done nothing. Subhanallah. Why am I giving you this example? Because when we are reading the Quran, think of that machine. That, that when we are filling fuel, we watch the digits. They all go. Before you know it, it's sitting at this and that and that. Imagine every letter you are uttering, there's a machine calculating the rewards. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, and it's gone. Before you know it, oh, subhanallah, I'm sitting at a million. Alhamdulillah. So this is something you should be honored. You shouldn't be stopping reading the Quran. Imagine if I were to say, And so on. Imagine how many rewards would we be, would we be getting? One, two, three. It's hard to keep account. If I were to say, Alif Lam Mim 30. ذلك الكتاب لا ريب فيه هدى للمتقين الذين يؤمنون بالغيب ويقيمون الصلاة. Where did I stop? I don't even know. Subhanallah. It must have gone far beyond two, three hundred and wherever it stopped. This is the point I'm raising. Think of the reward you are getting by your recitation of the Quran. Complete it in the month of Ramadan. And Allah will open your doors. There is a great reward achieved only to read the Quran. And the Prophet ﷺ says, For every letter you get 10 rewards. And I am not saying Alif, Lam, Mim is one letter. But Alif is a letter, Lam is a letter, and Mim is a letter. And another narration, the Prophet ﷺ says, Al-Qur'anu hujjatul laka 
أو عليك. This Quran that you have will either bear witness for you or against you. So it will come on the day of judgment and it will bear witness for me or against me. I hope and I pray I understand that I need this Quran to bear witness for me and not against me. Because if I were leading my life far away from the teachings of the Quran, perhaps it will come. And the so many Qurans that I may have had would come and bear witness that, Oh Allah, this man or this woman has read me so many times. They even understood what was in me, but they did not practice anything. Allahu Akbar. May Allah forgive us. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قُلْ يَا عِبَادِيَ الَّذِينَ أَسْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ لَا تَقْنَطُوا مِنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَغْفِرُ الذُّنُوبَ جَمِيعًا إِنَّهُ هُوَ الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ O Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم Tell my worshippers, tell them who have transgressed against themselves never to lose hope in the mercy of Allah no matter what they have done Allah will forgive all their sins because he is most forgiving most merciful brothers and sisters shirk is association of partnership with Allah it is forgiven by Allah for as long as you are alive and you've asked for forgiveness the only time it is not forgiven is if you die in that condition so before we die, we ask Allah to forgive us. Although we may not be participating or engaging in shirk, and I hope not. May Allah make it clear for us wherever we are going wrong, so that we can ask forgiveness from Him. And may He accept that seeking of forgiveness. May He forgive us all. Brothers and sisters, this is the month of Ramadan. The hadith says, Wailun liman adraka Ramadan falam yughfarlah. Destruction be upon he or she who has been given such a blessed opportunity to witness the month of Ramadan and still he or she does not achieve the forgiveness of Allah. How can that happen? I have the month of Ramadan, the nights of Ramadan, where Allah is calling out who is asking me for forgiveness so that I can forgive him. Let us be from, be from amongst those who cry to Allah. Oh Allah, forgive our sins and oh Allah, help our suffering brethren across the globe, wherever they are, create ease for them, protect them, protect them from the enemy and protect us all, grant us ease and Gather us in paradise. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad. Subhanallah wa bihamdih. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika. Nashhadu an la ilaha illa ant. Nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk.